Have you ever wondered what lures to throw when the bass are moving into their pre-spawn pattern? I'll be honest, I have too. However, I'm gonna give you guys my top five lures that have produced consistent and big fish for me during the pre-spawn. I'm gonna give you guys all of the baits and then exactly what setups I throw each of those baits on. Now, before we get started here, I know some of you guys have already looked at these rods and you're like, but Cam, you've got more than five rods on the deck of the boat. Bear with me, slow down here. I'm gonna give you guys, it's kind of five categories, I'll say, but in some of those categories, I'm gonna give you kind of like a, a one-two variation. And that's why I've got, you know, those two different lures, but are basically the same thing. So bear with me there, we'll jump into all of that. If you guys stick around to the end of the video, I'm gonna give you guys a couple of different options to catch a kicker in a tournament or just your flat out personal best for pre-spawn bait. So I'm gonna include that at the end of the video. And again, just give you options either for tournament or just fun fishing to go ahead and catch your biggest bass of your life. If you guys stick around to the end of the video, I will show you those baits. As always, if you guys like this, this style of video, if you guys learned something from this video, go ahead, drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel. Now let's jump right into it. So my number one, and again, I'm, I'm not gonna go in order, guys. Like this isn't like my most caught fish to like least caught fish or biggest fish to least amount of fish. This is just five generic baits. They, you can use them at any specific time. You gotta adapt to the conditions, but it's not ordered. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not ranked in any way. I'm just gonna give you five of my favorites. Number one is a jerk bait. So, Hands down, a jerkbait is by far one of the best producing lures on the planet, year round. I mean, hands down, no questions asked. It draws a reaction strike, and ultimately you can get fish to eat that just aren't really wanting to eat. Now, why this plays such a big role in the pre-spawn? Because those fish are willing to eat. So you can get really aggressive fish combined with a bait where you can cover water and cause a reaction strike, and boom, you've got yourself a winner there. You can catch, oh gosh, I've caught so, so many fish on a jerk bait. That's definitely up on the top of the list if I were to rank these. But hands down, one of the best pre-spawn lures that you can absolutely fish. I would say stick to your natural colors. That's my personal preference. I fish clear water. You know, anything shad pattern, whites, blues, greens. Uh, again, it's a reaction strike and you could dial it in further, but just go out and start with that and you will absolutely catch fish on a jerk bait. I throw this and I could do it, I will actually do an entire video on jerk baits, but I throw this on a 610 Shimano X Pride B. It is a medium action rod. I'm sorry, a medium power rod. Fast action. And honestly, best jerk bait rod hands down on the planet. So if you guys are looking for a new jerk bait rod, that's the one for you. I throw this uh, reel is a Revo MGX 8 to 1 to 1. Absolutely, you want a faster reel. Again, when you twitch or if you're ripping really hard, you're moving that bait three, four feet at a time sometimes, and you want that quick real turn to, uh, or that real speed to go ahead and catch up to that bait and or the fish that absolutely smash it. I then throw it on either eight or 10 pound fluorocarbon fishing line. I fish deeper clear water again, not a ton of underwater structure they can really get hung up on because it's deeper. If I were fishing shallower, maybe, you know, on uh, large mouth lakes, and there were some shoreline cover or stumps, stuff like that, I might jump up to a 12 to 15 pound line. But just remember that the heavier the line that you go, the less action the bait's gonna have and the less, I'm sorry, the shallower the bait's gonna run. So again, heavier line means less action on a jerk bait and shallower. So if this jerk bait's rated for let's say five feet, once I start getting up, you know, to 12 pound, 15 pound, 17 pound, if I start jumping up like that, it's only gonna run, you know, three feet, two feet, stuff, uh, just something to keep in mind there. Hands down, fish catcher though. So that's a jerk bait, that's option number one. Number two is a crankbait. The reason, again, same thing as the jerk bait, kind of similar situation, the crankbait draws a complete reaction strike. It's a fast moving bait, generally. It deflects off of rock and cover, and 
it just causes those fish, especially the big ones, to either have to make a decision to eat or not eat. And again, that's the definition of a reaction strike. So fantastic bait in the springtime, especially when these fish are moving in, you know, from their winter patterns, they're going to be staging up guys on secondary points. And they kind of already are. I got I mean, I'll, I'll drop that on you guys, but they're already moving in that direction. And that crankbait is just a perfect way to cover those points especially rocky points to draw a reaction strike. Those fish are schooling up on those points, you know, staging, getting ready to move in. And the crankbait is just a great reaction bait to, you know, draw those strikes. This is a pretty cool color here. I actually made that one. That's a, a foiled rock crawler. Pretty neat there. So unfortunately you can't get that. But anyway, throw your, again, shad colors. I like shad colors, uh, herring colors any bait fish. You could go crawfish, absolutely. I mean, that's definitely not out of the realm by any means, but I generally tend to lean, and you guys will see with all of these, I generally lend to tend to lean more towards a bait fish profile this time of year. It's just, I don't know, a confidence thing maybe. I just don't throw a lot of crawfish stuff. It absolutely works, but that's just, again, where I lean. I throw this on a seven, this is a custom rod, actually. I built this one. This is a 7-1 medium crankbait, crankbait rod. So it's super soft. I mean, it bends all the way. I mean, when you load up on a fish, guys, it bends deep into this blank. Hands down, fantastic rod, but I love that. Uh, built that one. And then, again, medium, medium power rod for the reel. Uh, this is a Shimano Metanium. I normally, with my crankbaits, go 7-1-to-1-to-1. To one to one. A little bit slower. I'm normally a fast reel speed guy, but... Hands down, that 7 one to one for crankbaits just slows it down a little bit, and I think that helps a lot, especially when you're, you know, bumping rocks and all that. You're not wedging it in the rocks, and that slower, a little bit slower. I know it's not slow, but that little bit slower speed can help you, you know, be efficient while you're fishing those points and rocks with this crankbait. But it's still fast enough where you can speed up once you catch a fish. So that's option number two is that crankbait. All right, option number three, let's go finesse. Option number three is a Nico. And I probably shouldn't be showing you guys this if I'm being blunt here, but it is what it is. I gotta give you guys the juice. If you guys have watched this far, you get some information. So props to you guys for sticking around. But this is a Nico and I'm going to post a video very soon going in depth on what a Nico is, but essentially it is a wacky rigged worm. As you guys can see here, my hook's rigged in the middle of the worm, and then you put a weight in the head of the worm. You guys can see there, it's, it's really heavy. So this worm is going to sit on the bottom like this, and when you pull it, because it's from the middle of the bait, it's got a unique action underwater that's different than a shaky head. So again, you're gonna pull it and it literally flops like that. So it's a different look. It's a weighted wacky rig is essentially what it is. It is a fish catching machine. Hands down, one of the best out there for both numbers and size. So that's one of my favorites, especially when the fishing gets tough or I start seeing a lot of fish and I've already gone through the area and I just wanna slow down and pick it apart. I switch over to that Nico rig. And again, it's just a finesse presentation. I throw this on a 852 NRX plus it's a 7.1 medium, medium power rod, extra fast action. I throw this with 10 pound braid on a 2,500 size reel with either six, eight or 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. This is eight right now, depending on what type of structure you are fishing. If you're going like rock and in brush, I jump up to 10. If you really have nothing to worry about and you wanna go super finesse, go six. Right now, like I said, this is eight. So this is one of those baits that I mentioned that there can be a variation off this. And again, this is a Nico rig. It's very similar to a shaky head. You fish it the exact same way. Finesse presentation on the bottom, but a shaky head is another great option either in combination with or in replacement of this Nico rig. I like to stick with green pumpkins, watermelons, if you have really dirty water, black blue, maybe June bug. Aside from that, as you guys can see here, pink worm, 
works pretty well. I'll be honest, it works fantastic. I, I, again, you guys have stuck around this far, you guys get the juice. On Lanier, the pink worm is fire. So try that out if you haven't already. But again, Shaky Head and Nico are your finesse options for pre-spawn bass. So that was option number three. Now let's jump into option number four. Option number four for me is going to be a swim bait. Right there, just a small little swim bait. I put it on a jig head, doesn't matter the brand guys, as long as it swims, I like the paddle tail style around this time of year. And you can throw this around docks, you can throw it up on points, you can fish it on the bottom, you can fish it up in the water column, you can fish it over brush, you can fish it just about anywhere. So this is one of the most versatile pre-spawn lures that I have in my arsenal. And I'm going to have you know the next few months on the deck of my boat because you can just use it in so many different applications. I throw this on same thing, NRX Plus 872. It's a 7-1 rod, medium power, extra fast action. Nothing, nothing crazy there. Same thing, 2,500 size reel, 10 or 12 pound braid to a, I'm gonna say with this one, I throw eight or 10 pound leader. Most of the time it's eight. This is eight right now. So that's, that's a very versatile lure for pre-spawn and they absolutely smoke it. Like I said, you can fish it just about anywhere and it looks like a bait fish. So it works phenomenally. Building off of this option number four, this combination, as I mentioned, I've got more rods on the deck of the boat. Just to give you a different option, maybe day to day, or again, just something to have also, but I consider kind of the same thing. It's still a paddle tail style swim bait with a jig head. However, this is an underspin. And this underspin can be fantastic on specific days. The difference between the small swim bait and this underspin is exactly like it sounds, guys. There's a blade on the bottom, a shiny blade. And if it's sunny out, sometimes the fish just want a little extra flash, a little extra noise. You never know, but you can fish this in the same areas as that swim bait. Again, essentially the same thing alongside docks on the bottom on the points, in shallow ditches, over brush, you name it, you can fish it anywhere. So another versatile option, but I consider it, again, the same category. So that's option number four. And then finally, option number five is going to be a spinner bait. A spinner bait can be a, a unique lure, definitely for pre-spawn, I would consider it, although it's not always, but it's definitely more of a big fish bait. You can catch big largemouth under docks. You can catch big spotted bass under docks. A spinner bait is a great way to catch a kicker if you're in a tournament or just out fun fishing and trying to catch a bigger sized fish. You can reel these again under docks, which is why it's great for pre-spawn over the points, especially when it's windy. You want some wind with this for sure and sun but reeling it over those points that those fish are staging on and then reeling under those docks that those fish are moving under uh, to go ahead and spawn on just makes it one of the you know bigger fish lures for pre-spawn fish. I throw this on a 883 bladed jig rod by G Loomis. This is a medium heavy and I throw it on 17 or 20 pound fluorocarbon just you want a little bit heavier there's a lot of drag with the blades in the water and when you're whipping that bait around all day again a spinner bait is a little bit bigger of a lure it's a little bit heavier of a lure and just a little bit larger line helps you know decrease that stress on the knot and the line all day while whipping that lure around especially in wind so don't be afraid you know like i said go up to 17 or 20 pound line right now on this i have 20. 20 pound line on this, uh, no problems there. But again, throw it in the wind and you'll catch some big fish for sure. Real eight one to one Revo Premier. It is a little bit larger size of a reel. You guys can see maybe the handle is a little bit larger, just a little bit more cranking power. This is really good for maybe swim baits. Again, this spinner bait causes a lot of drag in the water. The little bit bigger handle just helps, you know, take a little bit of that strain and that torque off of reeling this lure in. But nothing crazy there. Hands down, big fish producer for sure. Now in that same category, I know this is a huge debate, which is kind of funny to me because I kind of lean more towards a spinner bait, 
but you can also throw a chatterbait. And a chatterbait is also a very, very fantastic lure. The only problem with the chatterbait is you can't throw it through wood. It hangs up a lot more than the spinnerbait, which is why I tend to lean towards the spinnerbait. However, there are many people that hands down swear by a chatterbait and they flat out work. I mean, I'll be honest, when I go to other lakes, I try it sometimes here on Lanier, but when I go to other lakes, I absolutely include it in the arsenal for my pre-spawn lures. And again, you would throw it the same places and the same style that you would a spinnerbait, and that's why I include it in the same category at number five. But you can absolutely catch big fish on the chatterbait as well, catch some big largemouth. And again, keep it to the shad colors, you know, silvers, blues, greens. That's what I like to do. That's kind of my favorite. I'll be curious, guys. Let me know down in the comments below. Are you a spinnerbait guy or are you a chatterbait guy? I'd be very curious to hear because, again, you throw them in the same stuff, but and they both produce for certain types of people, but most people seem to have a confidence bait when it comes to either one or the other. So that's the fifth option there. All right, so y'all have made it to the end of the video, which props to you, you guys have learned a bunch so far and I've given up some good information. However, as I promised, if you guys stuck around, I was gonna give you guys some kicker style baits, way to just catch, you know, that big fish of the tournament or the big fish that you've ever caught in, li in your life, the biggest fish you've ever caught in your life. And those baits come down to swim baits and glide baits. You guys have probably heard me mention or talk about them a little bit before on my channel. I've been fishing swim baits and glide baits for, golly, five plus years easy now. I've caught some monster fish on them. Actually, they're responsible for, I think, just about all. I think all 10 of my 10 largest fish ever in my life have all come on a swim bait or glide bait. So they are absolutely a key tool to have in the arsenal for tournaments and fun fishing. So I, I broke it up into two categories because in a tournament is very different than just fun fishing in my opinion. You're trying to get more bites while still trying to maintain getting some big bites where if you're fun, just fun fishing, you can absolutely, and what I like to do sometimes is just go out and swing. I mean, I don't care if I don't catch a fish, but I'm gonna throw the biggest lure I can and try to catch my absolute personal best. So that's kind of two different options there where you can't do that in a tournament. But let's start off with tournament fishing and my two tournament baits, hands down, are going to be a six inch swim bait. I'd say six or seven, depending on the lake that you're at. You gotta know kind of the size of the fish that are in your lake and what kind of species are in that lake as well. Because in my lake, where I normally fish on Lanier, there's a lot of spotted bass. Now there are some largemouth, but it's mostly spotted bass. So I tend to scale down a little bit in my swim baits just to make sure that, you know, they've got smaller mouths, spotted bass have smaller mouths. And just to make sure I get a better hookup and they can fit that bait in their mouth. If I was on an entirely different, you know, largemouth lake, I might scale up a little bit larger on my tournament style bait. But again, for where I'm at, six inch bag draft, hands down, one of the best out there. No questions asked, you can catch a three pounder on this, you can catch a 10 pounder on this. It works on all of them, I promise you guys this. You guys are getting the juice here. If, you need, if you're gonna buy one color, get pearl white. I probably, sh I don't know, it's, it's out there. I probably shouldn't be saying that, but it is what it is. Get pearl white, hands down the best lure, color for the mag draft, and just work this guys along docks, works it, work it over points. And again, I'm gonna give away some juice even more throw this over brush piles for pre-spawn fish for the next month to two months try this guys everywhere you would fish a spinner bait or a chatter bait that we talked about upsize to a swim bait you'll get a little bit better class bite and some bigger fish so that's a tournament tournament winner for sure and then for the glide bait in a tournament go with either a six inch or a seven inch glide bait again not too big i mean it's only the size of my hand most of the bait fish if you guys I, don't, I mean, some people think this is a big bait. If you guys looked at the bait fish that are in your lake, or if you've ever seen some of them maybe floating or just swimming by the boat, you'd be surprised on how big some of those bait fish actually are, and those bass are still eating them. So a six or seven inch bait is not too big at all, especially in a tournament. But the Spro KB, uh, KGB Shad is a great option for a tournament bait. And then the Tater Hog, this is the Suey Shad. Again, just that six or seven inch profile and it's a glide bait, which means it only has one joint. It's not a swim bait. Swim baits have multiple joints. Ah, that's not true. It depends on how you categorize it, but we're gonna go with glide baits have one joint and 
ultimately this bait is going to glide, as the name implies, back and forth in the water, and you can kind of twitch it like a jerk bait, more information there, and get it to react hard and get those fish to react. So those are your two tournament style baits. Again, stick with the six and seven inch baits, I would think for a tournament, glide bait and swim bait, and you guys are going to catch a kicker fish on those baits for sure. Now, this is my favorite. This is what I've dabbled in for a long, long time. I definitely have not perfected it by any means. I believe there's always something to improve on in fishing in general. So I don't claim that I know everything about swim baiting and you know I have it perfectly set up and everything like that. But I guys, I'm, I would say I'm really close. And again, with the amount of experience that I've had swim bait fishing and glide bait fishing and the amount of success that I've had on it, I'm pretty dialed in, I would say, but again, there's always something to improve upon. But this is my bread and butter, this is what I love, is throwing an absolute giant bait. So if you guys are just fun fishing and you wanna go out and catch the fish of a lifetime, number one, and I will give this up, pick your bodies of water wisely. And what I mean by that is pick the lake you're going to, do your research, understand where bigger fish are coming out of which specific lakes those fish are coming out of because you can go to a lake that does not have big fish and throw these for the, the rest of your life every day 24 7 for the rest of your life and you will not catch the right size fish that you're looking for if that size fish does not exist in that lake so set yourself up for success and make sure that you're throwing these baits in lakes that actually have larger style of fish that can eat this so let's jump into this this is just for fun fishing. If you guys wanna get crazy, go ahead, knock yourselves out and throw these in a tournament. If you guys pull up with this on your front deck of your boat, walking into a tournament, which I may for my next one, to be honest, it'd be kind of funny, but uh, people are gonna look at you like you're crazy, which you kind of are, throwing a bait this big. I mean, this bait is gigantic. This is a 10 inch mag draft. It catches fish. Guys, I promise you, it catches fish. I lived out in Texas for a couple years and I would throw this bait out there, and I caught seven, eight, nine pound largemouth on this bait right here. They will eat it, they are not afraid of it. You will get bit by four pounders. I'm not even kidding. The four pound fish will eat this, or try to, I should say. So that's a 10 inch mag draft, super fun bait. If for anything, guys, again, it just looks crazy. I mean, it's just an absolutely preposterous bait. I mean, it's a huge bait, big hook, you want to throw this on specialized gear. Again, these two are, are definitely on specialized gear. You want a dedicated heavy or extra heavy swim bait rod. You want a Tranks 200 size reel and you want 25 pound fluorocarbon. That's the way to go. But that's option number one to catch your absolute personal best. And then number two is throwing a nine or 10 inch glide bait. So I believe this is just shy of nine inches. The Hinkle Shad, I actually left it in the garage today, unfortunately didn't even think about it, but the Hinkle Shad is a bit bigger than this, but either way, they are gizzard shad imitators and they are nine and 10 inch glide baits, again, single joint, and hands down, throw these on the same, you know, same gear that you would that 25 pound uh, fluorocarbon, extra heavy swim bait rod, and you know, Tranks 300. That's a big bait right there, you guys can see. I mean, that's blocks out my hand for sure. It's a big bait you're going for a five pound plus class of fish. And guys, 10, 11, 12 pound fish will also eat these baits. So those are kind of my two options for fun fishing. Go big, you'd be surprised. I mean, they make 12 inch swim baits that are absolutely freakish and you'll get, I mean, I've thrown this on Lanier, I'll be honest, I've thrown this 10 inch on Lanier. I haven't caught one on it, but I've had so many fish follow and sometimes, I'm giving up more information again, but sometimes you just, you just need to figure out where those fish are during that pre-spawn process. Then you can go back through and use one of your regular baits to catch those fish. So you can almost use it as a search tool to draw those fish up because a two pound fish will absolutely follow that bait all the way to the boat, even though it's the same size as this lure. So. I've given up a ton of information there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, go ahead, again, drop a like down below, comment on if you're a spinnerbait or a chatterbait guy, and then let me know if you throw any of these baits. I'd be very curious as well. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. Again, dropped a lot of juice. I will talk to you all soon.